Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Rick. This is Yacht Elf, the oldest active racing yacht in America. A real challenge to sail because there's over a mile of strings on this boat. And the bigger challenge is cooking in this galley. It's a small, tight galley, and I'm a big boy. But if I don't keep the crew fed, they get mutinous. And I don't want that on my watch. Okay, it's race day and uh, I want to take and get my delivery crew fed before my race team comes aboard. My delivery crew is only a four person uh, group. My delivery team is great to bring the boat from place to place and then I need a full complement of 12 people to take care of all the over a mile of strings to pull to get this boat moving. So today we're going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to show you how to make a crab omelet my way. So we're going to start with a little bit of uh, onion in the pan. We're going to dice it reasonably finely and uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and we're just going to get going. I'm kind of under the gun here because we have to uh, really make things work quickly and uh, I need to get everyone fed, cleaned up, and all the sails ready for a big race. We're over here at the National Sailing Hall of Fame in Annapolis, and uh, they uh, are sponsoring a classic and antique boat race that is a pursuit start, and uh, our starting time is 11.57, and we need to be all ready, practiced on the race course before we even get there. So we've got our hands full today. But in the meantime, I'm going to tell you about a good friend of mine, Richard Schofield. He has been the head of the boat shop here for years at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum and is now the assistant curator of the watercraft collection here at the museum. And he's here to tell us a lot of different things about the uh, various boats on display. We've got 92 boats in the collection here at the museum I'm responsible for. About 30 or 40 of those are in storage and a bunch of them are in display buildings and all, but we've got 10 large boats that are in the water year-round. That's a lot the of floating work. fleet, the ones that you know. Right. Including the likes of Edna Lockwood, which is our uh, 1889 log hull bug eye, the oldest sailing bug eye in the world. Edna's, um, she's the queen of the fleet. Of all the boats we have, she's um, absolutely unique. And she's my pride and joy. Um, we, sail her, we got her sailing this year for the first time in about nine years. She had some structural issues we had to deal with again, um, rebuild some of the decks and all. But we got her sailing again this year. Oh, I remember. We try to keep most elf, of the boats elf sailing. Taking uh, oh. the camera crew out uh, and sailing she's, along she's with fast, it. She's fast, but she's not that fast. <laughs> she's not elf fast. Oh, but we had a lot of fun that day. That was great to uh, be a part of his living history here yeah. at the museum. Yeah, she's a, to see those two boats, and elf is 1886. 1888. 1888. Yeah, 1888. Those two boats are incredible. Yeah. I think so, about that, you know. A um, yacht and a work boat. Edna is, for what she is, she's a really fast bug eye and uh, does amazingly well. They were built as work boats. They weren't worried about speed as much as power for dredging. She was built for dredging oysters, and she worked from 1889 until 1967. And wow. the museum acquired her in 1974. Um, the skipjacks, which are the more common dredging boat, we, I mean, we have a skipjack, the Rosie Parks, under restoration. The skipjacks were, if they got 30 years out of a skipjack, right. they got their money out of it. They were done. Right. The bug guys were a little more long lived. They were a little more difficult to build, uh, but they expected to get a little more time out of them. Edna, She's lasted a long time. You she was rebuilt here in the mid-70s, and relaunched in 79, our 90th birthday. Wow. And she was new from basically for the logs up. A log hull, by that we mean she's a, she has nine yellow pine logs squared up, right. pinned together, and it, it makes her shape about to the water line. Small frames and planks from there up. She was rebuilt from the logs up in the late 70s. The work we did recently was, um, it was not indicative of the work they did, it was the, the materials they had were not the best. Right. I'm hoping we've been able to put better material back in and we'll get a little more time out of it. Right, right, right. But it was great to get her sailing again. It, uh, she oh. is just one of my one of the real joys to sail and to get, oh, wow. get on her again was fun. I'll tell you, I, we, we enjoyed watching her sail you know, for the first time this year. We, and, we uh, try to use all the boats in the collection as much as we can. I mean, Rick, you've probably been on, on Martha, the, oh, the dovetail. Martha. Sure, I love um, her. The small Jackson skiff. Sure. Old Point is another log hull. She was built for power. And, 
1912. We okay. did a major restoration on her about 10 years ago, I guess. Okay. Uh, Delaware, the tugboat, we just finished a lot of work on her. Oh. She, she turned 100 years this year. Oh, is that so? Okay. So yeah. we, uh, we took her back to Bethel, Delaware recently for oh, her 100th anniversary. That's where she oh, was that's still. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, was very, that's great. it was very cool to have her there. They, they were real oh, excited. absolutely. That's... So we try to run the boats. We never run them enough. Boats need to be run all the time, but mm -hmm. we do as best we can. And it's it, you never get tired of it. I get, I get a little um, jaunted sometimes in the museum, and you know, because it is a job. But anytime you step on those boats, it's different. They are oh, very special. Next thing I want to do is put the uh, crab meat in. I'm going to use about a half a pound today. And uh, this is one of the finest treats on the bay, uh, Maryland crab meat. And uh, it's the blue claw variety. And it's just uh, freshly picked and packed. And I'm ready to get started working. I like to check it to see that there's no shell in it. Usually uh, the, the folks take and uh, do a fine job getting it out uh, of the crab and you know minimizing the uh, the claw and shell kind of portion that uh, sometimes gets in the mix and I like to go through it with my hands to feel there's a little piece got to take that out okay so we'll take and uh, do a quick clean on it there's a little bit of uh, shell in it and uh, I don't like to have the shell in the meal of course so here's why we're doing this I think that's a pretty nice uh, crab meat and I'm going to uh, just kind of put the lid back on, let it kind of simmer a little bit, and then we'll add some more ingredients. Okay, one of my next ingredients that I like to do is to take and saturate the crab meat with lemon juice. And I'm going to take a nice big lemon here, cut it in half, and then the halves and quarters. And this is a nice big juicy lemon that uh, feels like it's a fresh pick. Okay. This will just take a moment, and uh, oh, that's really looking good. Okay, just gonna clean this all up. And one thing I have is just a little taste of lime left over from uh, my dark and stormies last night. I'm gonna put it in also. Hate to waste things. Now add just a little touch of different flavor. You don't have to add lime, but if you have it, it's great. Okay, let me just take a moment and stir that around and give you a little peek as to what we're doing. In this galley, there's not much space, so it's a little tough. Okay, everything's kind of getting together here. Uh, I can't wait. And I know the crew is uh, going to be coming back from the showers and getting all set for a great breakfast, and uh, I'll be ready for them. Okay, let's get that simmering a little bit. Next thing I like to do on my crab is to put a little bit of Old Bay on. Now, I don't like to take and open up the spoon part. I just put the little pouring part on and give it a few shakes. I don't want to put too much in because you can really overdo it quickly. And that's about it. Okay. Next thing I like to do is to add some Lee and Perrin Worcestershire sauce. And this is a new thick type and uh, I found it to be quite quite good and I'm going to put a few shakes in doesn't need a lot but it really picks up the flavor and once I do that I'm going to take a moment and stir it around again to let the flavors kind of meld together okay. that's the ticket I want to get them all kind of working together that looks great. Boy, the smell down here is just tremendously wonderful. I love cooking crab, but it really makes me hungry, so I've got to keep a pace on and get done. Okay, we're going to let that just continue to cook. And one thing I like, which is an option, is to add a little bit of red pepper. It's uh, red bell pepper, and uh, I like to cut it up uh, finely, adds a little flavor, but also another important thing is color. Presentation is important with me. As to uh, the better it looks, the better it seems to taste. Just a little bit of uh, dicing here. Doesn't have to be real fine. It can be little chunks. Uh, do it to your taste. It'll add a little bit of crunch. I put it in kind of toward the end because I enjoy the crunchy factor, the texture as it were. Okay, 
we're cooking up a storm here now. And I'm going to just stir this in just a little bit. You can see how it picks up the color here and uh, doesn't need to be cooked much because I like it raw. I like it uh, lightly cooked and that's about all I want to do. We're going to just set this back on the heat, turn the heat down a little now. Oh, <laughs> like I said, this is a very difficult uh, one to deal with, so I've got to keep working at keeping it lit, <clears throat> especially when I turn it down. There we go. Now, let's try that again. Turn that little... Uh, oh, okay, went out again. Like I said, there's what we want. Just a little bit of heat, not a lot. Because it's all doing its thing quite well. Okay. My next ingredient is going to be the eggs. I like to kind of put the eggs uh, in a little bowl and then uh, add a little bit of sour cream, whip them all up with a fork, and then layer it right on top of the uh, crab. And I'm going to say, about a half dozen medium eggs and get them all organized. You can use more, you can use less. And I use the entire egg. Some people just like the whites in this, but uh, not me. I like it all. Gotta have it all. So we're gonna get those going. And I'll just take a moment. We uh, have had a lot of fun racing this boat, sharing this boat, and uh, today we have uh, I think it's 16 or 18 classic and antique boats that we're going to be racing with and against. So it's a type of thing that's a fantastic thing to do here on Chesapeake Bay. And it takes and uh, helps to preserve the boat by keeping the interest uh, up. And uh, we want to keep everyone you know, kind of happy they're coming along and seeing these boats. Okay.
Okay, I like to do is uh, do a lot of things. The uh, fat-free uh, items, as you can see here, we have the fat-free sour cream. I'm going to just take a couple big dollops of it and put in my eggs and work the eggs up. And I'll show you what we're doing in just a moment. I think about half of this little half pint would be about right. And here's the trick, okay, to get the eggs kind of worked up, broken up, and then the sour cream in. Uh, sometimes, uh, at, if I'm at home, I use a blender. But I'm not at home, so I have to really kind of work at this uh, to get them all broken up. Okay, steady hands and uh, careful attention to detail so I don't splash egg all over the place. We are able to get it with a fork and uh, use it instead of a blender to kind of mix it all up, get it kind of right consistency and uh, it works out pretty well for, you know, what we're doing today. And we're almost uh, done. All we have to do is add this to our crab meat and uh, in the pan and let it cook with a little cheese on top, which I like to do. And you're going to see the sour cream makes it kind of fluff up and real light. Okay? So let me add this to the pan real quick and make it all work. Okay, let's stir just a little bit and spread everything out. I want to make sure everything is pretty evenly done. That, oh, it smells so wonderfully. And then I like to flatten it out so when you take and put it on the plate, every piece that you put on the plate is just full of crab and you don't get a hollow spot. So I'm just going to add this right in here so that you can see what we're doing real easily and just get it all over the crab meat and kind of, there we go, and kind of work it around. And that's good distribution. So you have uh, the crab on the bottom. And now we're adding it back to the heat. The next thing I want to do is just add a little bit of uh, cheese here. I have uh, like a finely shredded uh, cheddar cheese. And I'm going to do a couple handfuls on top and spread it around. I'll show you again. And I like the cheese in the morning. Or I should say, I like the cheese anytime. Okay. Now. Here we have the pan. I'm going to add just a little bit more Old Bay on top because I like to uh, use it as kind of a dressing almost or dresser upper. I'm not using a whole lot. This doesn't want to pour either but, or come out of the can, but it works out pretty nicely. So just a little on top as a finish. Okay. Not lots and lots. As you can see, the shaker makes it kind of work well. Okay. We're just going to put it on the pan. Uh, put the pan on the uh, stove and kind of let it go for about five, maybe ten minutes. It's going to cook, cheese will melt, and we're going to see it kind of fluff up like clouds. And that's due to the sour cream in the uh, mix, and it works kind of nicely. Keeps the egg in the mix very, very light, which I particularly like. Okay, that's uh, a good start for the morning, and I'm going to get the uh, plates all ready so everyone's all set to go with some fruit some toast and uh, a cup of coffee and uh, some of the finest Chesapeake Bay crab meat omelet that you can ever sink your teeth into so let me get it off the stove turn the heat off take the lid off in front of you and you're going to absolutely love it so here we have Captain Rick's creamy crab omelet and I'm going to serve it up. This is wonderful. It's nice and light and fluffy, just perfectly cooked, and you're going to absolutely love it. Mmm. -mm. Oh wow! It's light as a feather, and going to taste even better. Here we have the morning's treat to really enjoy. It gets me going 
gets a good uh, fuel source in my energy uh, quotient, and I'm telling you, my crew will absolutely love it, as your crew will also. So try something like this. You can change it up a little bit, depending upon what you have aboard the boat, and absolutely get right into it. So, till the next time, bon appetit, keep the crew fed. I've had enough. This is it. Ah.